everyone, welcome to Ed Talk TV, conversations worth having. I'm your host, Ed Troxel, aka Tech Man, and I am here to help save you, the busy business owner, from everyday tech. And on this show, we talk about business, tech, and the user experience, because that's a big one. That's a huge, huge one. If nothing else, that's like the one you want to focus on. If this is your first time joining, welcome. We're starting off the new year right. Uh, I'm so glad you found me. If you're watching the replay, please be sure to pop into the comments and say hello. That's that's a big thing you'll hear me talk about throughout the broadcast. It's really important not only for you to comment so I know you're here, but it's also a way for you to get noticed. People will browse the comments. They not only will browse the comments, but this broadcast gets repurposed, meaning I put it over on my blog, and your comments also come over there, which means, wait for it, wait for it, we're getting a little techie here, but it means that Google actually collects all that information, and so your name can actually appear in a Google search associated with my name. So super cool stuff that we have going on over here. So anytime you watch one of my broadcasts, please be sure to pop into the comments and say hello at the very least. It's part of my show up, deliver, and engage. That's that's my three core values. That's the secret formula to life that I teach you. And uh, when you do that, you will be able to take everything to the next level for you personally as well as professionally. So if this is your first time joining, welcome. This is a weekly talk show. We used to go five days a week and we decided to test out one day a week because there's so much other good stuff going on that it just works for our schedule as well as yours. So be sure to tune in. If you are on Facebook, you want to make sure to not only like my page, like is great, but like, follow, and see first. Those are the kind of the options, and if you need help, just let me know. So what we're going to do here on the show is we are going to have some random news. That's what I always like to kick the show off with uh, because it can allow us to have a little bit of a conversation and some fun before we dive into today's main content, which for today we are going to cover four steps to help you speak better while going live. And we'll talk more about that and how I broke it down right there. It will tie in, I swear. So feel free to share this out, tag your friends. Uh, I am going to share with you guys before we jump into random news. I mean, it's technically part of random news, I guess. But I'm going to share with you. Uh, see, I did it. I already did it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that every time I hear it. And you can do that at home as well. We'll talk about what that is. I know it's kind of random at the beginning here. We'll talk about that in a minute. But if you're not already a HeyEd member, HeyEd is a, a network. See, it did it again. <laughs> HeyEd Network is an app that I have for you, the business owner, to join. It's a community where you can ask your business questions, your tech questions, and be part of our community and engage with other like-minded uh, business owners and be able to pretty much have this as your start here page. This is, I'm your start here page, you know, and so this is where you can go to get those resources all year long, all day long, all year long. <laughs> I'm already ready for you guys to have a successful 2019, which is why you got to get into the HeyEd Network and join that. We also have a private Facebook group for fun times over there. Vicki, welcome. Awesome. I'm so glad that I popped up in your feed because all we all know Facebook, and if you don't know, you will know now, Facebook has not been really great with notifications. And I will mention this. See, this is why you tune in and why you tag your friends and share this out because you come for one topic, but you definitely get more than that in this episode. So real quick on the notifications about Facebook because this is ex experiencing this throughout the network on Facebook notifications are not reliable. So if you are trying to run your business on Facebook, like many of us do, you need to make sure that you do your part and not only check in on your people, your groups, your page, all of that, but also educate them and remind them to try to tag you if it's specific. You know, for a Facebook group, if you want somebody to really see that post, the only thing that you really can do besides post it is tag them and hope that Facebook makes that notification clear on their end. So just 
try to do what you can to help with the notification issue that we're having here on Facebook. But that came up because Vicky was saying that I popped up in her newsfeed and that she got the notification. No worry, Vicky. I know you're in the UK. We have a lot of UK viewers, so enjoy your rest and catch the replay and let us know what you think. So let's jump into random news. Here we go. For those who are inside the Hey Ed Network, you already got a glimpse of Tech Man. This is my digital character that just got upgraded. And I wanted to show the rest of you guys here my little flyer that I created. So you'll start seeing Tech Man a lot more here online. Basically, it's me, but I just wanted to share with you the new graphic because that just came in. And just to remind you, don't have, have no fear. Tech Man is here. I'm saving business owners every day from today's complicated technology. And you can find out all about me in the, the link that's in my bio, but I also put it in the comments here, which I'll show you guys later. So, in random news, Sears. How many of us have heard the sad story about Sears? After 126 years, they are basically calling it quits. We know that they were doing the whole bankruptcy thing, but it looks like uh, they are now going to try to get the judge to let them liquidate after rejecting a 4.4 billion takeover bid. How crazy is that? This means that they can actually close, that they would probably close, actually will close, all of their stores, 700 stores and 68,000 employees in the October bankruptcy. Isn't that crazy? And this would be Sears and Kmart stores. So some of you may not have uh, a Sears, but you probably have a Kmart, Kmart or vice versa. So it's a big, big deal. And it, it's just, you know, it's, it's hard to think about having a business that long and having to finally call it quits. I mean, think about how many of us have our businesses that maybe we started six months ago, a year ago, five years ago, and then we run into the part where it, we have to close. I've been there, done that with one of my businesses. And it's a hard decision to have, uh, a conversation to have with yourself, and it's a hard decision to make. But, especially for us as small business owners, we need to make sure that we do have that conversation, that we are open to having that, because we don't need to be taken through the mud further than we need to. You know, we want to hold on and we feel like we're just right around the corner and we maybe are, but if we're not honest with ourselves and we don't have that real conversation with ourselves and look at what it is we want and our why, then it's, it's not going to work. And we're just going to go through a lot of extra work that we didn't need to when we could pause pivot or call it quits and then fix something else. So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, to tie it in as a real example, I will say my first business was a magazine that I ran for two years. I did both print and online. All four issues are on my website for people to review if they like. But after two years, I decided, you know what? I got what I needed out of this business. It took me to all these new opportunities. It opened the door for all these new opportunities, I should say. Connected me with the right people. Gave me all the real life experience I needed. There was no need for me to continue to try to push through. And I remember still being in the garage, putting everything into a box and asking myself, is this it? Am I okay with this? What if I'm right around the corner? And I said, you know what? It's going in the box. I'm going to call it quits for now. If I need to come back to it, I can. I just open the box and start it back up. That's it. And thankfully, I made that decision and it took me to the next level and connected me with the right people and I haven't had to open that box again. And I've been able to apply those skills throughout my, my businesses and throughout other people's businesses. So it's really cool. So think about that. Now, the other thing in random news, let me flip my screen back here. Anybody watched the Bird Box? Bird Box has been very popular, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, or maybe you do, but you're like, well, I just thought it was a movie, definitely look it up because it's not just for the movie part, it's for the way it was promoted. So basically, Netflix hasn't had to promote Bird Box at all. I mean, they've put out, you know, a little trailer here and there, but everyone has been talking about it, which is 
what, even if you're watching the replay, what kind of marketing is that for us? That's right, it's word of mouth. And how much does word of mouth cost? Bloop. Zero dollars. How many of us want word of mouth marketing? All hands should be going up. Word of mouth marketing is still number one. Yet we all focus, most of us, focus on Facebook ads, Google ads, all these different types of ads, but we forget about word of mouth. It's still number one. It's still the most affordable for everyone because it costs zero dollars. You just have to put in the work. You just have to show up, deliver, and engage with your people, and they'll do the work for you. It comes naturally. So remember that and, and take a look at the bird box marketing because that really, really is a, a real life example that had taken off just here recently. Now, because of bird box, there's now a whole challenge called the bird box challenge. I do not advise you to do this, but I'm just showing you what's in the news and that people are basically blindfolding themselves and doing whatever, uh, you know, like here on Good Morning America, Good Day, uh, they had blindfolded each other and tried to put on makeup on Sarah. You know, there's all these different ones, and then you get these bird box memes, which have been funny, a lot of them. You know, quote, I know you saw my text, me, and then you don't see anything. So it's just, there's a lot going on around this, and it's a great thing for you as a business owner to take a look at just a small sample of it to kind of get that idea of, the marketing behind it, how it took off, why it took off. Ask yourself, why? Why is this so popular? Even if you don't want to watch the movie or have seen the movie and you're like, oh, I don't know. It doesn't matter about the movie necessarily. It matters about the marketing and the conversation around it. Remember, social media is all about joining the conversation. We've lost that over the years, but that's originally what it is, uh, started out as, and that's what it's continued as. And we just don't talk about it that way. So it's all about joining the conversation, which is what you want to be doing, even if you're watching the replay here in the comments. Now, let's jump into today's topic, which is four ways you can improve your speech for going live. Now, I'm going to bring up the whiteboard here because it's always fun to bring in the whiteboard. Always fun. Now, I want you to be sure to pop into the comments, even if you're watching the replay, to let me know what tips you have. Because remember, you're not just sharing your tips with me. You're sharing them with everyone who's going to be watching the replay and scanning the comments. That's the important part. Lots of us will show up after the fact, and then we will go through and read the comments and chime in there. So remember that even when you're going live. What can I say? I, I can't help but teach. I teach all day long, and I love it. So let's look at step number one. Well, I guess I should write four steps. By the way, remember I am tech man. I deal with technology. So don't judge me too hard on my handwriting, okay? <laughs> it's been a while. It's been a while. Four steps. Proving. We'll say four Facebook. So number one, what's one thing that you can do to improve your speech? Number one is going to be record yourself. This is one we probably all hate to do. How many of you, even if you're watching the replay, hate doing this? I will tell you, I do as well. I did. Now I now it's just my normal thing that I have to. But what I mean by recording yourself is you can do a video just on your phone. You don't have to go live. You can just practice on your phone and do a recording of you and have that be your recording. Or you can do a voice memo or just audio, whatever works for you, but have something to record yourself. Then the reason why I like to suggest recording just on your phone is because of number two, which is watch your replay. 
This is a big one. You have to do this one first, right? But when you do this, this is when the moments of, oh, I can't believe I said that. Jeez, that drives me crazy when people say that. Oh, oh, this is good. That's bad. Oh, that's where our critiques come in. And it's so important for us to watch our replays, at least in the beginning. And every so often, you know, we can go through and remind ourselves. But it's very important to watch our replays because oftentimes when we are in the recording stage, even if it's a live broadcast like this, when we're in this stage, we think that we're doing a really bad job, especially if we're new at this. Think, oh man, I screwed that up. I said the wrong thing. I said a lot of ums. I did this and that. But it's not until we get to this stage where we actually realize, oh, actually, that wasn't that bad. Let me go ahead, brush off my shoulders. Right? That's what happens in this stage. So you have to do this part in order to really see and hear the difference and understand where your strengths and your opportunities are. Remember, that's feedback. For those who are new, feedback is simply your strengths and your opportunities, and you want to ask people for feedback. Open, honest feedback. And when you look at it as strengths and opportunities, you're golden. You just take it as one or the other, and that's it. Nothing personal. So that's what you want to do is watch your replay. Number three, this is what I was doing at the beginning of this broadcast for those who caught it is you want to clap when you hear words like, which is actually one of those words that you can use. Um, so pick a word that you get annoyed with, like, um, right, maybe, any of those filler words, and clap when you hear them especially when you watch your replay. Now, if you can, you can practice live so you have an audience, or you can invite a friend over, or maybe your assistant or someone in the office if you're at a nine to five, whatever it may be. But if you can involve somebody else in this process and they can go through and clap as you speak, that will be extremely helpful. If not, all of this can be done at home by yourself. You just have to record yourself, watch your replay, and then clap when you hear those keywords that you don't want. Then number four. Kind of, it goes in order nicely, doesn't it? Number four is a big one. I'm going to say pause and repeat. What that means is, because I don't want to write out the whole thing here. What this means is, when you get to a sentence, for instance, let me just randomly come up with one saying, how great is um, the event? So that sentence, you would have clapped when I said um, and now I would pause and think about that sentence, repeat it, but remove, I'll put that here but remove the um. So how great is that event? First sentence, I'll try to remember it. <laughs> the first sentence would be, how great um is that event? So you clap, you pause, you repeat the sentence, but you remove that filler word. How great is that event? We have to give that pause so our brains can think. Now, we all have room for opportunity here, this myself included. So you have to pause, think about that sentence, and then go ahead. And I say repeat because I want you to get in the habit of fixing the sentence. It's just as if we were going into a Word document and typing out uh, our paper or our blog post. As we type the blog post, we see a word that is misspelled. Some of us will go back after we finish typing it to edit, and then we will read the sentence over again to make sure it flows. That's the correct spelling. 
or we may go in and edit midway through. Either way, we always go back and reread, or we should, so that way it makes sense. So that's the same idea here, you can't see it there, here is to do that. Pause, repeat it, and remove that word. That way you can get in the habit of doing that. So hopefully that makes sense for you. Again, these are four steps that you can do at home. If you can invite a friend to help you out with number three, awesome. It just makes it more fun. And many of you will have your own little Facebook groups. I say little, but they may not be little. Uh, you might see, I did a, so we can clap there. I don't know why I did a double clap, but you know, it's fun. You can take these exercises and run with them by yourself, with friends, with colleagues, or within your own Facebook groups, if you have a Facebook group. So keep that in mind. This is what we want to work on. And really it comes down to us slowing down. I'm going to just put over here, slow down. It really just comes to, it just comes down for to us for being able to slow down and think about the word we want to use before we actually say it, because that's where those filler words come in. And I will say, I'm right there with you guys. So think about this, apply it. Of course, let me know in the comments, even on the replay, how this went for you. You can always feel free to tag my page, at Ed Troxel Creative here, so that I can get a notification, hopefully from Facebook, letting me know that you've done this on your page, in your broadcast, with your friends, whatever it may be. But I always like to hear from you and see how that goes. And if you need anything, please be sure to uh, check out, see I did it again, please be sure to check out my website at troxel.com. I put a bit.ly link in the comments below just because it's a quick link to a bunch of different things. I'm going to take this down for now. And if you're not on the email list, that's free, and you want to jump on that today because there'll be a new email going out on Friday, and we have a whole new design that went out last week, and it's awesome, and it's great for you to get your quick tips and connections to where you need to be. So I hope that you have a great day, great evening, morning, wherever you're tuning in from, and we will see you back here, same time, same place, next week. Take care.